So before the interview started, we were talking about I cannot stand ash. So Glenn goes, man, he said, I knew something told me. I, I'm telling you, if I looked over and, them, and I saw some ash and knuckles, I'd been like, hold up. Get that bottle out of my bag right now. My I, wife won't let, she knew I was coming on the, on the, on the interview. Next thing I know, there was a, a, a travel bottle of Nivea. Hey, dog. Sitting right on the, on the, on the dresser. Okay, I got the message. Bro. Yeah, I am. Okay, is this good? Can that, I go? You good. Can, can I go now? Yeah, the end, yeah you right. can't write. We, we call them ash check. Check. It's an ash. <laughs> not, not ash check. Not an ass check. An it's ash, an ash check. check. Okay. That's I'm right. Check. You can't. I'm look, check. uh-uh. My, nie- my nieces, my uh, wife. Uh, uh, right. Uh, I don't care what y'all wearing. Uh, I'm going to look at them elbows, ankles, and hands. That's it. That's right. I'm, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Oh, Doc, man. how you doing? I'm good, baby. I'm good. It's good to see you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're looking good as always. You know, I'm just Y'all don't understand. Like you looking clean. This is how he comes to the golf course. <laughs> He's dressed like this on look, the golf course. Huh? You know what they say? What look, you can play well or look well. I prefer to play well and yeah, look, look well. well. <laughs> see, uh-uh. See, I, I'm trying to hurt your feelings yeah. with the final score and the outfit. And the outfit. Right. If, in fact, I don't even like it. It's so funny, y'all. So Glenn seen one of these tennis shoes. I, you know, I hate tennis shoe golf shoes. Right. You want to look right. like tennis yeah, shoes? Look like tennis shoes. I prefer the, the old, old school, school classic. I mean, where they Le- look. Leather, leather shoe. Where they look with, like. With they, a cleat. look like dread. Dre- mm-hmm. I do. It's just, mm-hmm. it's just something. And you, it's, it's hard to find them. I it's know. hard to find Nowadays. them. Because I. It, 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 there's something about, I'm telling you, I'm sitting there watching you and you got the hat, you know, you got, you got the suit. But I was like, Lynn, I can't wear tennis shoes with a suit. Well, these, this, this ain't just any tennis shoe. <laughs> tennis shoe. Tennis shoe. See, y'all, y'all try to be this, out new this, 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 No, this just ain't any tennis shoe. What is that? Now. Come on now. What's come, that? Come on now. You know what this What's is. What's that? Come on now. No, if I say it, I got to get paid. What's that? <laughs> Let me tell you what that look like. If I, if I say it, I got to get paid. Let me tell you what that look like. Look like a blue-ass tennis shoe. <laughs> that look like a blue-ass tennis shoe. Yeah, right? yeah. Well, see, there you go already. You got to, just saying blue. See, yeah. Let's everybody know what kind of shoe this is. See right there. See? see right there. Am I right? See that see this remind me of the movie Strictly Business. That's it. Find me movie Strictly mm-hmm. Business when uh when uh 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 what's his name? Philip, Joseph Phillips was <laughs> going to the club and, and Tommy Davis said, Hey, what you got on? He said, This is a Brooks Brother suit. He said, Well, you would have put that shit on the outside, it looked like a gray ass suit to me. <laughs> 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 Tommy ain't got no sense. See, I, I'm telling you, I, I, I can't. I, look, I am, I am well, that's incapable I of wearing athletic shoes with a suit. That's how I am with a baseball cap and a suit. I'm the same way. I can't wear a baseball cap with a suit. That's very I, hard for see, me. I, I just think that, I, I think so much of that goes back to how we grew up. I yep. just, so you, yeah. you, you grew up. East, East Coast, I'm New York. See, mm-hmm. you can't. I, that's right. You you can't. Yeah, you can't here. come in here looking crazy. No, no, See, that's the thing I t- explain about black people. Mm-hmm. We may not grow up with a lot of money, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but we gonna look clean. For sure. That was that. That was something. What, what was for, for you? What, what was that? Oh yeah. Family and friends. Oh, like yeah. you hey, didn't. Look, you didn't play. Hey, I was ironing my clothes at nine and ten years old. <laughs> Starch. That's it. Yeah, are you kidding? Hold up, and you, you Argo. Come on, see, 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 everybody don't understand creases. That's see what I'm saying. See, don't know how to line it up. No, got to know how to line it up. I was doing that at nine and ten. And then if you didn't line it up right, Mm -hmm. we gonna iron out the crease that the the old crease with the water. You gotta hit them. Come on, gotta hit it with that water. See, See? see. See right there. What, what was that? What move was that? Y'all know that move. See, that's why it's uh, that's why it's hard for yeah, me. Yeah. Mark Lamont Hill hit me. He said, "Bro, he said, man, have you ever just gone out?" He said, "Jeans and a t-shirt." I said, "Hell no." Uh, I said, "Yeah." Bro, I said, I, "I said, man, that in I said that hurts my sensibilities." <laughs> but you see now, see, there's a difference between me and you. Uh huh. My most comfortable attire 
It's one of the reasons I moved to, to California. Right. Is because I love just wearing jeans and a T-shirt. Okay. I'm that simple. If you ever, I'm telling you, I can, if you ever see me in jeans mm. that will be cowboy boots on. Well, you see me with them cowboy boots on. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, nah, you, yeah. Know, you know that. Yeah, we know I, that. I don't have to go there on that. Right, we know that. But that's my most comfortable attire, jeans and a T-shirt. I took some meetings out here. This was several years ago. And they all looking at me because it look, I'm suit, tie. Yeah, yeah. We got the pocket square. Yeah, oh, we yeah. got the color socks, uh, shoes, uh, polish. Uh, that's you. They got jeans, t shirts on. And they were that, like, that was here in California. Every meeting. Yeah, every yeah, meeting. Yeah. And I'm sitting there going, and they looking at me like, they like, y'all dressed up. I'm looking at them going, this ain't dressed up. Yeah. You know, dressed up. I ain't got a hat. Right. I don't know. Like, yeah, this ain't dressed up. Yeah, you didn't have a tie. Did you have a tie? No, I had a tie. You had a tie. But it, was, but it wasn't like, it wasn't like, you know. You didn't have the bar. You didn't have a tie. Right. Bar. See, we, you yeah, know, yeah, we, you we, you know, we, I didn't even put on the door. I just had the eye watch. Yeah, see, yeah. I didn't even put on the uh, dress watch. The watch, right. I see, yeah, see, I see, there's somebody watching right now ain't got no idea what the hell we talking about. <laughs> they don't know nothing about no dress watch. That's right. That's right. They got no, right. what, now what, now what, what the, the two things do really, Glenn, irk me, and being from New York, I wonder if this irks you. When you see a dude with some unpolished shoes. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. No, no. No. No, that's, the, I don't care if you got on jeans. I don't care Ooh. what you got. You can wear short pants. I don't care, but you got to have polished shoes. I... The shoes have to be polished. I used to polish shoes for a living. Mm. I was a shoe shine boy. Oh yeah, no, yeah, you can't. Yeah, you you can't. I, I yeah, I bet cats walk up and you looking like. Mm mm. Mm mm. <laughs> scuff mark. Right. Like that's you. Right. Like, that's right. Like what? You, you didn't see them scuff mark when you right. put them shoes on. What? what? I, can, I I'm telling you, the other one for me is. What was it? I cannot handle unhemmed ass oh. pants and sleeves. Oh. I, man, I was, it's, mm. I was in Chicago. We were, no, I was in New York. We were mm. walking down the street, mm. and these young brothers came my way. I, oh, let me holler at y'all. Because, mm. see, I will give you leeway if you under 18, because mm. you're still growing. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we all know, mm -hmm. mom and dad are going to buy you that extra large ass suit so you can grow into, into that suit. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. I said, I get it. Mm -hmm. I said, let me holler at y'all. Mm -hmm. I said, man, how old are you? Mm -hmm. Once he was 20, I said, Bro, that's too much cloth at the bottom. Of me. I said, I need you either have a cuff mm -hmm. or I said, you got to get them things, him. Him. <laughs> mm. And then the, sli then the, the sleeve, if mm. that sleeve hit the middle mm -hmm. of your palm, wrong. you need to be slapped. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I just, I, sorry. I, I, I will tell people. Yeah. 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 Okay, and I'm going to try this on it. Okay. Have you ever been shopping? And you mm. saw a brother mm -hmm. about to buy an absolute whack outfit, and mm. did you prevent him from? Did you say, "Brother, let me holler"? At you. <laughs> you, you, you ever did that one, Glenn? No. Are you serious? No, no, no. Are you uh, sick? No, I have not. You? No, no I have not. You, but but you seen uh, uh, somebody about to buy something that I wouldn't buy, and it was and it was and that, you didn't and you no, it was just out that, of sense of brotherly love did not intervene. No, it's just that you know to each his own. I wouldn't do that. I can't do that, Glenn. You got to. I can't do that. Glenn, I can't do that. You can't. You got. I can't do that, Glenn. I can't. It's a t to each his own. Glenn, I can't. I, Maybe he I, sees something public, I don't see. As a black public service, I cannot <laughs> do. I'm telling you. I was in a store, and the woman was a clerk, and this brother, and I said, I was sitting. I'm trying to, shout, and I'm trying to avoid mm -hmm. my peripheral, and I was kind of like, uh -huh. shit, don't go together. Uh, and I was like, mm. and I, it was, I was, I'm trying to buy this tie. And I was I'm like, say, bro, let me hop. Uh, yeah. I can't let you walk out of okay. school with that. No, just can't. <laughs> Get your eyes. I said, I can't. I did. I said, I can't. I said, look, she don't know what she she's doing. Do I said, she's just trying to get this safe. Yeah. I, I said, I can't do this. But your best, she ain't looking out for your best. I said, I can't. I said, I can't have a bunch of women out there laughing at you mm. when they see you walk into the church. I said, I can't. Can't do it. I said, bro, that don't go together. Yeah. I completely, mm -hmm. I said, I need you to get rid of that. <laughs> I need you to get rid of that. Oh, no. I said, this shirt, 
this did, tie, did, this jacket, pocket square. Bro, did he do it? Oh, hell yeah, he did. He did. Right. He was a brother. Uh-huh. We had Nordstrom's. White guy. Mm-hmm. I, I got a problem when women shop for men, mm-hmm. which means that that man ain't been trained right. Mm-hmm. And so we're in Nordstrom. And this is an old, this dude was probably, he was in his, this like his 30s or something. Mm-hmm. His mama. Mm-hmm. I'm like, your mama shopping for you? Mm-hmm. I'm trying to mind my business. Mm-hmm. See. And mm-hmm. I overhear the conversation. Uh-huh. And so, this is what you hear. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I didn't. I, 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 <laughs> I didn't mean for it to like get rejected, yeah, rejected right? But you were still. I was so watching, loud. and I went, and he heard it. He said, huh? "He said so." He said, "He, he said, what do you think?" What, I, what, said, what? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. <laughs> I said, "Don't don't get that. Right? Don't don't do that." And he go, he's like, "Really?" Uh-huh. He's like, "My mom." I said, Mm-mm. "Let me ask you a question. Mm-hmm. Your mama ever make any men's dress, best dress list?" Mm-hmm. 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 He says, no, I said, I have. Mm-hmm. Put that shit down. Mm-hmm. You need to get that. that see. I said, but don't, don't walk out that way. Mm-hmm. That damn outfit right there. Mm-hmm. I said, I don't care what your mama say. That does not look good. Uh, said, oh, man, she overheard. She bought the look. She was hot. I was uh, like, don't listen to your mama. Uh, get to buy that tie. Uh, I'm telling you right now. I just couldn't. But here, mm-mm. I can't. I, hey. Well, you see, you are one of our major custodians of style. <laughs> That's, you know, that just comes with, with who, being who you are. Everybody expects that of you. You see what I'm saying? Now, I might have got cussed out. <laughs> see, no, I, I, <laughs> but, but nobody gonna cuss you out because you know what you're talking I about. Had, I had, I need help. I ain't gonna lie. Every once in a while, my wife would say, no, uh no. Oh, oh, no. No, don't go out there with Really? That. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Every once in a while. My wife got. No, she is. She is my no, wife has that, absolutely that, zero that, input. Uh, oh, no. On. Oh, no, no. I, and I appreciate the help. I appreciate yeah, the I help. I can't. I can't. She, uh, in fact, she comes to me. Mm-hmm. We went on the cruise. True story. Mm. I know y'all probably like, when they gonna get to Glenn's career? We gonna get there. But he can't come in here looking all clean and everything. Glenn, straight up, we go, we shopping. So we go on the cruise. So we sitting in the store. Doc, yeah, now yeah. this is me. Yeah. We, she trying clothes out. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the sales clerk, she mm. come over here with some stuff. I said, I'm sorry. Mm. Did I ask you <laughs> to pick out yeah. anything? No. Mm-hmm. Your job mm-hmm. is to take back mm-hmm. what we don't get. Mm-hmm. I don't need Mm-mm. your help mm-hmm. with any clothing selection. Mm-hmm. I said, my daddy had me, my brother, and my sister mm-hmm. go to the store and purchase clothes for my mama for Mother's Day and her birthday. Mm-hmm. I said, I was raised on patterns, mm-hmm. colors, mm-hmm. I said, well, what looks good? I don't need your help. Mm-hmm. I need you to take that stack back. Mm-hmm. We keeping those outfits. Yeah, now go, that outfit look good. Go that, ahead. That one. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, she, yeah. Wife ain't saying nothing. nothing. She's like, uh-huh. I'm like, baby, I don't need your help. Mm-hmm. I just need go on. I need to take it. that stuff. That's it. Because see, they think they the, see they think we don't know what we're doing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because they run they they run up on way too many men who walk in the store. Do you look good? Mm-hmm. I. It, I, I <laughs> Cause see, I had I, you know I had a black man who was like, Mm-mm, son, mm-hmm. he wouldn't let me walk. We he wouldn't let me walk out the house when it was in style where you had penny loafers and no socks. Mm-hmm. He said, no, your oh, ass ain't walk out the house with no socks oh, on. Oh, no, you gotta put socks on. So we we put the socks on and we took them off. We got in the car. Uh, we went, but he's uh, like, your ass ain't walk out the damn house with no socks that? on. Mm-hmm. Oh, and a belt. <laughs> Doc, we literally oh, yeah. had oh, yeah. a sock check, yeah. a belt check. Oh, yeah. He looked over the whole lot. Yeah, we can go to church now. Uh-huh. Oh yeah. See, so that's that's yeah, that's how, that, hey, that's in your DNA. That's how I was raised. And Glenn, one of the greatest moments ever in my life was taking my dad shopping for Father's Day. Uh, uh I the road reversed. I picked everything out. Yeah, we in the yeah, store. Yeah. And so I was like, yeah, he's like, oh the blazer good. I said, blazer look good. Mm. Okay. 
this combination shirt mm. to the sales dude. I said, I need you to go get that that uh, that tie off that mannequin across. He was like, mm. he said, that's not going to match. I said, I did not ask your opinion. Mm -hmm. I said, go and get that tie. So he brings it back. I put it with the shirt. I said, do you see how that color in the stripe in the jacket, it got pulled out? I see, see your ass didn't see that. Mm. I did. So, mm. put the, and my, so here's my daddy mm -hmm. standing there watching me put the jacket, the shirt, the tie, the pocket square, and the cuff links together. And he looking like a proud dad, like, uh, uh, that's yeah. exactly what I was doing. Uh, see? So he saw the fruits of his labor. labor. That's, <laughs> that's beautiful, baby. That's it beautiful. was too much fun. Well, that's what I said, baby. You the man. That's, we in your wheel. <laughs>from New York to being uh, the 21st century Bill Pickett. <laughs> really? You ain't like you grew up in Birmingham, no. or somewhere in Georgia. No. I was sitting, I was talking to somebody, they said, man, they said, the cowboy. They said, all oh, the Hollywood cowboy is Glenn. I said, Glenn has from New York City. Harlem, New York what? City. Harlem. <laughs> ain't no manure nowhere in Harlem. How'd that happen? Well, hey, baby. You know, the short answer is because I wanted to. You know, I wanted to be a cowboy. You know, ever since I was knee high, you know. Uh, and uh, I used to play hooky. Go to the stables down there on, on uh, 60 something street in Central Park, right off of Central Park, and shovel manure. And the man would let me ride his horse. I clean up them stalls. And I just always wanted to know now, I'm going to fast forward. You're a lucky man. You grew up with your father who instilled a lot of stuff in you. I didn't know my father coming up. Mm. Later, I got to know my father after I became a, a young man, 1920. Mm -hmm. And uh, started learning about that side of the family, his side of the family. Come to find out his father, my grandfather, who I never met, had horses mm. and land, property. So that was in your DNA. It was in my DNA. He was a man from Georgia. The, family, the, the land is still in the family. Mm. And uh, it was in my DNA because, you, as you know, I've got the ranch and horses and all that, but I did all that before I knew that family tree line. So it all came kind of natural. What is it about, both of us love golf, we played, we played together. Uh, Y'all gonna laugh, I had the music going. Glenn was like, we gotta turn that music down. <laughs> Cause I, I can't have soft music. No. Yeah, well, no, well, yeah, See, but, if, if there's a but, volume but, limit on the speaker. You got everybody out there like this, over the ball. Come on, but, but golf is rhythm. Come on now, black, come, come on, it's rhythm. But at some point you got to focus on, you can't be listening to Luke. Oh, yes you can, because it's all about, first of all, it's also, you know, see part, see, part of the problem, see this right here is part of the problem with the golfers. They sit there, you know, they're like, you know, they, they're all rigid and everything, and they're, they, 
You want to get a big one to dress? See, we got to. <laughs> you know, see, it's a whole yeah, different the whole, the whole thing. <laughs> it is the whole thing. You're right. You're right. It's a whole different so thing. Even if you don't make the shot, you look good. No, I mean, you know, it's, you it know, makes sense. You know how we, we see, roll. That's how we approach That's the how balls. We roll. So, you That's know, right. you got to have a you little. Have, you got to have a little, a, a little, 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 something, little, something, 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 something with that. See, so you know, if Frankie Beverly Mays playing or the OJ's, right, right, I mean, right. it's a little hard you know, to do all that without the music yeah, playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, you're right. You're right about it. So, so what? So what is it about the outdoors? Um, so when, when you are, so what is it about it when you're riding, when you're when you're out there? How does that make you feel? Oh man, that's the greatest feeling. I was just up in the hills and the mountains yesterday. I just, I just came down because I had this interview with you. <laughs> if it wasn't for this interview with you, I'd still be in the hills. <laughs> My son and I took a ride yesterday. Dad, I found a new trail I want to show it to you. I said, saddle them up, let's go. And we hit the high, high country and just had a great time yesterday. See, I have not ridden in years. I, was, yeah. I met a sister Cedric Entertainment's golf tournament. She owns mm. uh, a riding academy. Oh yeah. And I, she, we talk, I said, I have not ridden in mm. years. Well, I come said, on, man. But I see, mean, you always you just hit, come in, do the thing, and then cut out. You know, I'm trying to get you to spend some time, man. Spend some time. Let me grab you and take you on up to the ranch, man. Put you on a horse. Okay, we'll get you up into the mountains there where you can we'll, see. We'll do that. we we'll absolutely do that next time because I'm I'm back. I'm back. Uh, no, we'll, we'll absolutely do that. See, I'll 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 put on a day, now, now, now I'll put gonna, on an extra day. Yeah, okay, but you're gonna have to. Here's what you're gonna have to do, though. You know you're gonna have to wear some jeans. But I told you that ain't a problem. Okay. Because I'm gonna have cowboy boots. All right. As long as you up there, you ain't up there on that in that seer sucker suit. Now, now, then again, I can wear some boots with a seer sucker and still be clean riding see, that horse. Now, you, you know, can't take you nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know how to act. I mean, because that might have to be a picture on that horse now. Yeah, so, because yeah, yeah. okay. it's gonna be the first time they like the first Negro in a seer sucker pair of pants and some cowboy. <laughs> Boots on top of a horse. I mean, if you look, so hey, if you want to rock it, it's you, baby. You but I know I'll do it because I, okay. I better cow because I got about 15 pair of cowboy boots. Now I, I'm okay. I'm all native right. Texan now. All right, yeah, because you're from Houston, right? Born and raised. Yeah, all right. Born and raised. Yeah. Born and raised. All right. So how did you? So so here you are. You're in Harlem, and being this love affair with horses. Where acting come from? How, where did, where oh. did this? What happened? Acting came to me uh, through a relationship my mother had with a, 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 a wonderful, talented woman by the name of Lorraine Hansberry. Mm. Your mother knew her? Yes. Lorraine Hansberry wrote A Raisin in the Sun. Mm -hmm. And we had moved from Harlem to Greenwich Village in the 50s. And that's where she met Lorraine Hansberry and, and James Baldwin and, and um, you know, Miles Davis and all. What did your mother do? My mother, she was a, a postal worker. You know, she worked in the post office. She was. Uh, so she wasn't in the art. She wasn't, she wasn't in, in any of that. She wasn't. But I think she always liked that world. I right. think if she, if she could have realized some of her dreams, right. you know, instead of uh, uh, having to feed me, right. <laughs> right. you know, that she might have dabbled in that, but she didn't. So she and, crossed paths with these? And she crossed, and she crossed paths with these people because the village at that time, Greenwich Village at that time, was a, was a icon for uh, very intellectual and very artistic people, you know, and so her friends and, uh, were of that ilk, mm. you know, and so that's where I got to know all of these people. I mean, these people were in our small apartment. The apartment wasn't any... Wow. Wasn't, you know, there's nothing in here small enough to, dem <laughs> <laughs> to demonstrate how, how small my Dude, apartment is. Like, I can't even, I can't, I can't even can't, give no, y'all an no, example. No, no, Maybe that patio no, right there? No, no, that's too big. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, you think I'm kidding. <laughs> but that small space, some of the most brilliant minds mm. of our time crowded that small space and was there an intellectual conversation that I was privy to as a kid, but you know, of course, paid no attention to because all I wanted was for one of them, you know, Uncle James Baldwin, uh, Uncle James, give me a quarter because the ice cream man is downstairs. And I want to go get a quarter, you know. I want wow. Some ice cream, you know, here, Glenn, here, go, go get, you know, that kind of thing. 
So that's all I was interested in. I didn't know that these minds were that. Right. It was like, these, these you like, yeah. hey, I'm only James Ball. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> James Paul. Right. You see I, what I'm saying? Rain Hansberry. Hansberry, you know. And uh, so when Miss Hansberry wrote this play, she told my mother that there was a role for a little boy in it. And would I be interested in auditioning? And my whole thing was, uh, well, I don't know if I want to do it because is it Saturday? I got a baseball game Saturday. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if this is going to mess so up hold my on, baseball hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, hold on. Let, let me. So D. Lorraine Hansberry mm -hmm. writes A Raisin in the Sun. Right. This iconic play. Mm -hmm. She asked yo mama, I got a role for a little boy. Mm -hmm. The little Glenn want to do it. Yo ass talking about this gonna get away the baseball game. What your mama say? God, you out <laughs> your mind, no, 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 she, no, I know that's what she wanted to do. <laughs> right. Uh, but uh, no, it wasn't like that. First of all, I had to audition. And I didn't know what an audition was. So I she worked with me on this on the on the road. My mother and I, we rehearsed in that little square space and went up to audition. And uh, when I got there, I saw all these other little colored boys sitting in the hallway and I couldn't figure out what they was doing there. <laughs> Cause there been, you know, because yeah, this is, this is, there's only one little boy in the, in the play. I read it. <laughs> That's me. So, so you like the job. Man, yeah, what y'all yeah, here what for? Yeah, what y'all here for? You know, <laughs> and I, so I didn't know until afterwards that that's that everybody was trying to get that part. Wow. You know, and uh, got it. I got it. Cause you got an inside track. Well, I, I had an inside track. All the rain sitting at your, but, your little box. Absolutely. Cause it ain't who you know, it's who knows you. <laughs> but the other thing was I was never nervous because I didn't, I wasn't you had aware. no expectations. I, I had no, I had you just no like, I, all right, you want me to read a sheet of paper? Yeah. Okay. You know. So, and I didn't give it a second thought. I wasn't afraid of the competition because I didn't know I had competition. Mm. You know, I assumed the part was mine. And that I found out is one of the keys to auditioning is assuming the part is yours. Wow. Claiming it. It's, it's, it's what we do in church. You claim it. Mm -hmm. you claim the miracle, you know. So that's what I did and got it and went on the road and worked with Sidney Poitier and Ruby D and Lou Gossett, Diana Sands, and some of the greatest people in the business. Pull up a chair, take your seat. The Black Tape with me, Dr. Greg Carr, here on the Black Star Network. Every week, we'll take a deeper dive into the world we're living in. Join the conversation only on the Black Star Network. One of the great things about the business, people always talk about, you know, the, the fame and the glory and all that kind of stuff. But that's, that's secondary to some of the other things of like who you get to meet that's right. in this business. That's right. Where you get to go right. as a result of this business. You know, like meeting you and meeting, uh, you know, Lorraine Hansberry or, or Diana Sands or Ruby D or Sidney Poitier. I met Dorothy Dandridge, mm. you know, and Pearl Bailey, and, you know, and uh, uh, some of the greatest people that you ever want. Sammy Davis Jr., you know. Now, these are names that maybe some of your, your viewers don't even remember, you know. But we're talking about iconic time. people. But these are iconic people. And you're, the, and you're remembering just, just the conversations, just the fun, just not, not, not oh, this, this, yeah. Just the work, but just yeah, the, the, the stuff the, that's the, off, 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 sc off screen. Yeah. Stuff. So my character's name in the play was Travis. And I hated that name 
in the play. If you all remember Raising the Sun, if any of you students, acting students have done, you know the character with the little boy's name is Travis. I thought that was the corniest name. I don't know why Miss Hanbury. You said I ain't never met no black Travis. I ain't never met no black Travis. That's exactly what I said. <laughs> That's it. That's it. <laughs> so I couldn't stand the day. So we do doing the play, we rehearsing, we rehearsing. And we all break for lunch. We go to lunch, and uh, I, I'm hanging with the adults. And Sydney and uh, uh, Sidney Poitier, Ruby D, I think Ivan Dixon, and maybe it was Diana Sands, we all go up to a restaurant to have lunch. It's a loud restaurant, very loud. And all of a sudden, this restaurant gets Definitely quiet. Just a hush comes over the room. And we stop and we look around, wonder why it's gone so quiet. And, and then all of a sudden, Sidney looks over and he stands up. And he even holds his arms out, and this gorgeous woman walks across the room, right into Sidney's arms. Darling, darling, oh, how are you? Oh, it's great. And, she, and the whole place is just like, mesmerized, and it started to dandridge. Mm. And I'm like, I'm only 12, but I'm, st I'm like, go, 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 go. <laughs> oh, she's gorgeous. Yes. And so Ruby D starts introducing Ivan, Ivan Dixon, Dr. Dandridge, da, 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 and goes around. And this is, this is our Travis. This is a uh, 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 Glenn Turman. He's our Travis. And she embraces me and gives me a kiss on the forehead and says, hello, Travis. <laughs> All of a sudden, that came the most beautiful name in the world. <laughs> that was the greatest name, man. I think to this day, Travis is probably the greatest You ain't name your son, Travis. I'm going to start to name my kids Travis. <laughs> But that was, you know, it, it's, it's times like that that right. I remember to this day that clear is a picture to me, you know, and uh, uh, some of the icons that I've had the, the, the great fortune of meeting. And well, that's how it was when, I, when, I, when we talked when, um, when Cicely Tyson passed. Mm -hmm. uh, when, you when you told the story, and I cracked up laughing mm -hmm. when uh, you said, uh, was it you tried to sing? Mm -hmm. And Cicely was like, don't do that. <laughs> I, 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 I hollered when you see, because you, you thought you would just. Oh, yeah, you couldn't tell me. She went, mm -mm. Mm -mm, don't, don't do that. Don't, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> oh, it's hard to believe she's gone, man. Hard to believe. Some of the people that's moved on down the line, but uh, to have known them, to right. spent the same space with them has been a true, true blessing, you know. How does it also feel, when we talk about iconic, when we talk about um, moments in history, when we talk about, like, I, I don't care. If you, if you had to name five iconic cult black classics. Movies? Cooley High is there. Mm -hmm. But then you also are connected to, in another generation, a historic cult classic, a different world. A different world, yeah. So, so, so talk about that Cooley High being young Lynn Terman, mm -hmm. and then a whole different generation with a different world, and then now with people being able to s repeat shows and it going over and they're still, they're, they're, see they're seeing it over and again. And so now you sort of have this, this multi-generational yeah. impact. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's kind of crazy. Uh, you know, the thing with, the, with Cooley High was, Cooley wasn't my first movie. Uh, I think I, my first movie that I had a featured role in was uh, Five on the Black Hand Side. Cooley High 
was a, a, a giant step in my career. Because, and this is how I knew. Now, I grew up, like I said, in, in the, from Harlem, grew up in the West Village, but my mother had three sisters, or two sisters. And one of them stayed in Harlem, and the other lived, moved to the projects, the Smith projects down in lower, uh, lower Manhattan. So I spent equal time, pretty much, with, in these households. And so part of my raising was in the projects mm -hmm. as, as well. And uh, I had been in a couple of TV things and so on and so forth over the years. So the kids in the neighborhood and the projects, they kind of knew that I kind of dabbled in, in showbiz. But when Cooley High came out, that weekend, there was a commotion in the hallway. Now, you know, the projects, you can hear everything, mm -hmm. you know, everything echoes. And we heard all this, this commotion in the hall. And my aunt said, what is that noise? What, what, what are they rowdy? And what's all that? Who's cutting up in the hallway? Went to open the door, and the entire floor was jam-packed. People all up and down the hall, all down the stairs and everything. Preach! 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 We want your autograph! I said, what y'all talking about? Jimmy, nigga, what you want? <laughs> What you doing here? All of a sudden, I had gone from this person they know, everybody knew me in the project, right. to this other person to preach, you know, and to Cooley High. All of a sudden, the whole dynamic of my existence had changed as a result of that one film. What do you think it was? What? what? Because it told their story. Right. You know, and they knew their story, and it wasn't a lie. And I was representing, and those of us in the movie was representing their story, and they were proud of the story that we were telling. Mm -hmm. Everybody was proud of that story. It was a story that we were glad for the rest of the world to get in on, mm -hmm. so that the rest of the world could look at us in a different light and know that we had, even if we were uh, hustlers, you know, we still had mamas and daddies, you know, and little brothers and, you know, our, our dreams and aspirations were filtered through even all of the negative things that we had to go through. That's why the dream of, of Lawrence Hilton Jacobs character, Cochise, was so important because mm -hmm. we all had in our neighborhood some Cochise that we couldn't wait for him to make it, you know. I'll never forget. Uh, 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 um, going to Lou Alcinda's send-off party in the projects, mm -hmm. another project mm -hmm. uptown. Lou Alcinda, before he became Korean, Korean Abdul Jabbar. Abdul -Jabbar. Yep. Yes, indeed. We came up to his party and crowded that same hall just like that for his send-off party. Wow. Because he was going away to UCLA to represent all of us in the project. You know, so that was the biggest thing that was going on. And I, we didn't even live in those projects. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he, was, he represented all projects. He represented all the projects <laughs> in the city, you know. <laughs> it was the same kind of thing, mm -hmm. you know. Go, go, go for us. Do, do, we're behind you, you know, represent, you know. And I think that that's what Cooley did, you know, what Cooley I did. And I think that that's why it was so like. <laughs> I'm Deborah Owens, America's Wealth Coach, and my new show, Get Wealthy, focuses on the things that your financial advisor and bank isn't telling you, but you absolutely need to know. So watch Get Wealthy on the Black Star Network.
So I have a, again, people who come on my show, that there are five movies that if they have not seen, they can't come back to do my, <laughs> straight up. Really? I've had people come, if you, if you ain't seen Cooley High or Car Wash, mm. you cannot come back and do my show. Yeah. Unless, yeah, I pull black cards. <laughs> I do. I, and I'll I bust you on the show. I will put, I say, you can't come, I would tell them, you cannot come back on this show unless you have seen these five, five movies. movies. Yeah. That's it. And that's, so Coolie High and Car Wash are two of those movies. I tell them, I said, no, I, so I don't care. They're like, well, uh, well uh, Coolie High, man, that's so long ago. I was like, mm. y'all still see Casablanca? Yeah, you see? You see? I said, uh, I don't want to hear that. That's right. I said, no. I said, so that, that, that's one of them. When you, when you think, when you think, what? And I, before I ask the question, I, I'm quite sure it's going to be something a lot of us haven't seen. I ask music artists all the time. When I ever ask them what's their favorite album, typically it's a, an album that a lot of people didn't hear because it meant something to them. For you, what, what would you say, all the things have you done? movies, television, stage, all of these things, what was the most satisfying and fulfilling role for you? Hmm. Well, I've been, I've been blessed to have been a part of some wonderful, wonderful projects, bro. You know, you know, you started, we started out with Cooley, which was a, which was a satisfying, wonderful, role and had a combination of everything comedy adventure you know tragedy mm -hmm. you know so i was able to play all those notes in that you know uh but i'm and of course ma rainey's black bottom is a, is, a, is a is a wonderful piece to be a part of for for various reasons you know um a different world uh the character Colonel Taylor put me in a, a, a special place because the, I can't tell you how many people have come to me and said, if it wasn't for you and a different world, I wouldn't have gone to college. You know, so to be a part of that legacy is, is, uh, is, uh, is heartwarming, you know. But I'll tell you, Roll, and I don't know how it's going to come out, and I, I don't know yet what impact it will be, it will have, but I know the impact that it's had on me. Um, playing a character named Mose Wright in a project that I just finished not too long ago. Mm. In a series called Women of the Movement. And the first series is about the Emmett Till story. Mm. And it's told from his mother's Mamie mm -hmm. Till, Till Mobley point of view. And I get to play Mose Wright, his uncle, mm -hmm. who was responsible for him going down to Mississippi mm -hmm. from where and whose home he stayed in until he was dragged out of his home and defiled the way he was. I tell you, I don't remember of late or in some time a role that has impacted me the way playing and getting the opportunity and the, the, the honor to represent this man's story in telling this iconic story of our black experience. Uh, we had four f women directors that were just amazing you know, and a script that is amazing, and I can't wait for your public to, to see this story. Please do not miss Women of the Movement. What, were you, what would you say was the absolute most fun, just outlandishly fun? <laughs> I think I know what it is. Wait, wait, wait. I wanna, I'm let you, I'm, 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 I, I, I tell you what, I had a hell of a lot of fun doing. I mean, Cooley was, of course, fun. He always makes his way to the list of most things. But I did a movie with a dear friend of mine named Max Julian. Mm -hmm. 
and we did a movie called Thomasine and Bushrod. And I got to play a Jamaican or West Indian cowboy <laughs> <laughs> named Jomo. And Jomo was bad. You know, Jomo was a bad dude. And we had so much fun with Vanetta McGee, Max Julian, Jason Bernard, it was a, that was, I just had a, a, a great time doing that, that film. I would say, again, outside looking in, your character on House of Lies is Don Cheeto's daddy. Oh. You, <laughs> you, you acted a fool on that show. <laughs> they, they did not let you play the old black man, you like, now look, uh-uh, you, 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 were a little, you, you were a little frisky. I got a little frisky. <laughs> <laughs> got, a, got, a, got a little frisky on that. House of Lies with Don, you know, Don, Don is just great. And we just, we had so much fun together, you know, and I was honored when he, he asked that, you know, uh, they asked who they, he wanted to be his father and he, he, he chose me to play the role, you know. And uh, we just had a great time, you know. Kristen Bell, she's a sweetheart, you know. And uh, a wonderful, wonderful cast, you know. And I got to direct. I got to direct uh, all of the webisodes. They did several webisodes mm -hmm. in that, for that show, for sh uh, Showtime. And I got to direct those, so that's always, you know, a nice bonus thrown into the cake because that's, that's what I do as well, you know. What What... What have you not done that you would want to do? I'm working on my Western. I haven't done my Western. I'm working on that. Really? Yeah, yeah. Now we got... Uh, We're getting close to it, too. So it's a, it's a Western. A, it's a Western. It's a good old-fashioned Western. Because we got, you know, sitting on the other side of that wall, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Posse over mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. So what you said, my Western, what... What's unique about your Western? Uh, my Western is steeped in things that did not necessarily uh, do anymore. In other words, John Ford, great director, mm -hmm. one of the big major characters that was always in the John Ford movie along with, you know, John Wayne and, you know, Ben Johnson and all those other iconic guys. One of the stars of their shows was the backdrop. Yep, yep. The was scenery. The scenery. Yep. Was the life on the rain, was the dust, was the wind, you know, was the grime, where the, 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 the twisters and the tumbleweed and, all the things that, you know, if you ever spend any time on the range, you've got to come to terms with. You know, uh, those elements will interfere with your plans, enhance your plans, destroy your plans, put your plans on hold. <laughs> you know? You're at the mercy of the land. You're at the mercy of the land you know, and that's grit. That's true grit. And when I do my Western, mm -hmm. that's part of the world that I will be addressing. You say you're close. I'm close. For a person out there who is in this business, who wants to be in this business, mm -hmm. what do you tell them that they must have in order to make it not a quick successful career, but a long fruitful one? What do they need? Mm -hmm. my, my, my quick answer to that is an old saying I've got, it goes a lean dog runs a long race. <laughs> But all I mean by that is try and carry as little baggage as possible. Mm. Mm. 
especially up here. Don't give yourself any unnecessary baggage because first of all, you never know when opportunity will present itself. So you've got to stay ready to keep from having to get ready. Mm -hmm. And if you've got to. Right. It's clutter. OK, get all that clutter out right. of the way. It's hoarding. The chance is gone. It's hoarding. <laughs> it's, hoard it's hoarding. See, I tell people, yeah. I, I, roll, I'm not a sky cab. I don't carry luggage. Yeah, see? <laughs> see, so I tell people, yeah, yeah. I, I, like, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't carry luggage. I don't it's, because it, it is because not only does it weigh you down, mm -hmm. it then everybody around you, and I think it prevents you from thinking, it mm -hmm. prevents you from making clear from, decisions. From, from, or, or, or to me, baggage affects my creativity. Because Absolutely, it, it, it gets in the way. So that's, I mean, I, I some some of my folks I work with, they, 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 they're like, man. You don't care about other people around you. I said, no, no, that's not true. I said, but when we come to work, I said, even when I'm at work, wife is not here. Mm -hmm. Parents are not here. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters are not here. Mm -hmm. I said, this, this is what I'm here said, for. This is what I'm here for. Mm -hmm. And if all that other stuff is present, mm -hmm. I said that I can't be fully present. That's right. And it may seem hard on some, and it, it takes its toll. Don't get me wrong. That kind of lifestyle does take its toll. Mm -hmm. So that's why I tell people, if you're not ready for this, don't get in it. Right. Don't get in it. You got to be in this because you can't help it. Right. to the launch of the Mass Poor People's Low Wage Assembly and Mara March on Washington, D.C., June 18, 2022. We are a new, unsettling force, and we are powerful, a new, unsettling force, and we are here. We're rising up to demonstrate the compelling power that we, poor and low-income people, have to reconstruct society from the bottom up. And we need to do it with the loudest voices possible, the biggest actions possible. Because we know that there is no scarcity in this land. The only scarcity is the moral will to do what's right. are those with sub-minimum wage jobs who can't afford sky-high rent. People with disabilities are the fastest growing minority group. It's crazy to me that in 2021, it's still legal for workplaces to pay a sub-minimum wage to people with disabilities. There are still so much trial and tribulations that we go through as indigenous people. We can't get a decent wage to sustain ourselves, nor can we get adequate housing. Veterans across this nation say enough is enough. We can't pat essential workers on the back on one day and then cut their health care the next day. Health is a political choice. What more do I need to do to prove that my voice is just as valuable as anyone else's? There are still forces in denial that would try to slow walk our transition to a clean economy and a just future for us all. We have an immoral system run by moral people but together we walk, and we walk and we fight. It's time for a change! Reconstruyamos esta gran nación! See, we are people of resilience as we fight these interlocking injustices together. When we work together, mobilize together, and rise together, we become a voice for the voiceless, and we become an agent of change in a time where great change is needed. We need the third reconstruction to ensure that deaf people, people with disabilities, and all people can have the right to live and to thrive. 
We know what they are doing. But the question is, what are we going to do? Reconstruction begins when we change our mentality and say it's time for you to get your foot off of my neck. Sheena Arnold said, after Martin ended, mm -hmm. she said it was another decade mm. before she got another mm -hmm. sitcom. Mm -hmm. She said, oh, I thought when Martin ended, mm -hmm. oh, I was going to mm -hmm. go to the next one. Mm -hmm. She said it was a decade. Yeah. So for you, how have you dealt with, for lack of a better phrase, how have you dealt with rejection or no? Have you dealt with someone saying, ah, you're not the right fit for this particular part? How, how what got you through those moments? Well, you know, it's, 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 first of all, I spread it around and made it look like a big act. Okay, in other words, I didn't just stay with motion pictures. I didn't just do television. I did theater. I taught acting. So I kept my foot in the pool. I'd go where it was. Mm -hmm. I'm a stage actor. I come from the stage. So I don't care if, if it's 99 seat house, you know, 99 seats to, to 2000 seats. I've played, you know, so I was always where the acting was so that I could keep my instrument strong. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I let the industry know that she wasn't my only passion. Mm. You know, you talked about what's it like up in those mountains. That's my other passion. What's it like training a horse? What's it like raising my kids to appreciate the outdoors, which is like uh, 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 um, doing rodeos and what's it like doing a summer camp and bringing kids in from the inner city who've never been outdoors and had that opportunity. What's it like doing presenting that? So I spread it around and make it look like a big act in that my passion is not tied up in I'm not defined by this one thing, you know, I have the talent, thank God that's been given to me, mm -hmm. you know, uh, but the perseverance that goes with that or that serves that talent has to be, uh, uh, um, has to be adhered to, has to be nurtured, has to be fed. And it's fed by my other experiences. You see, if I'm just in the world where I'm surrounded by just people in the business, say, well, where do I draw my next character from? But if I'm at a rodeo and I see a cat over there, you know, and he's got on worn down boots and he's got on, uh, you know, um, saggy jeans and there's a character. There's a character I can study. There's a character I can get to know. There's a character I might have to play one day. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So I'm always in the business, but I'm not always of the business. Mm -hmm. You know, and that has helped me keep some sense of sanity. You know, and. Uh, I guess that's as good an answer as I can give to that question. How did you meet Aretha Franklin? We met, Aretha and I met 
as a result of a friend of mine named Ben Vereen. <laughs> whom, uh, went Uber to talented. Uh, you got that right. Who went to high school. We, he and I went to performing arts high school together. The performing arts high school is now called LaGuardia. But back in the day, it was on 46th Street. And uh, Ben and I went there. And we remain friends to this day. And uh, he was performing at uh, a benefit for Jacqueline Onassis at the uh, Mark Taper Forum here in L.A. And asked me if I want, what was it, what you doing? I'm not, I got a show tonight. Let's do it. You know, we roll. And while he was preparing in his dressing room, I had stepped out and there was a young man uh, standing near the stairway, and said, uh, he recognized me. He said, oh, Glenn Terman. He said, uh, I said, yeah, how you doing? He says, oh, my mother just loves you, you know. Cooley I had been out and so on and so forth. I said, oh, great, yeah. I said, well, who's your mother? He's, he said, Aretha Franklin. I said, oh, oh whoa. <laughs> I said, uh, well, where is she? She said, she's up here, come, let me introduce you. And he took me backstage to her dressing room. And she was standing in the mirror in front of, you know, the lights go around the star mirrors, mm -hmm. and dressed in white and getting ready to perform. And she was standing up and she saw my reflection in the mirror. And she gave a little, ah, you know, and I, I gave a little, ah. <laughs> <laughs> a mutual admiration. Oh, of. yeah, for sure, for sure. And uh, we met and, uh, there at the, at, at, at the, uh, at the theater that, that evening. And she expressed at that time that she wanted to, uh, she had moved to California and she wanted to take lessons in acting. She wanted to do some acting. And I was, like I said, I teach. Right. You know, I was, I'd been teaching for 12 years, you know. And uh, so I said, well, I teach acting. And if you want, come come down to my classes. I didn't think she was going to come to the class. And uh, one evening, the class was very disruptive. They were all at the window. You know, hey, get back here. You know, come on, we got a class. What are you doing? My limousine just pulled up. You know, a lady got out in a fur coat. <laughs> I, said, I said, could this be? And sure enough, she walked into the class. And my first reaction was, you're late. <laughs> and you told she, the queen she was late. She was. You want to let her know, I'm a teacher. I'm a, and I'm serious. And I think that's what she came to find out. Was I serious? And uh, I was. And so we became serious. Serious number, you got married. That's as serious as it gets. The, the, the queen was special. Uh, uh, we had a relationship. She was a news junkie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she, man, she would text me. Mm -hmm. First of all, and she also was a night owl. My God. Mm -hmm. I got, I've, I'm in a bed, and mind you, I, I'm on live at 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. My phone rings, it's 12.45. I'm like, me and my wife in the bed, I'm like, now mind you, I had to get up at three. Mm -hmm. Like, who the hell is calling me from a 248 phone number? Mm -hmm. I was like, answer the phone. Rowan, Aretha. Mm -hmm. Oh, that segment you on tonight, she just started talking. <laughs> now, I'm trying, I'm trying, now do I need to tell the queen my ass is asleep? Sleep. <laughs> then I go. Well, it is the queen. Mm -hmm. So I guess I better get the hell up. And talk. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's, so it was, uh, and it was, that's, how, that's how it was. Well, okay. People don't realize how, how great she really was, how diverse she was, you know, and how smart she yes. was. Yes. Very smart, you know, very astute, you know, and, and, and hilarious, you know, really had a funny bone that was really. But also loyal in the sense that, so let me, it, it, she came to Constitution Hall in D.C. Mm -hmm. and uh, my nieces wanted to meet her. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. at a speech. Mm-hmm. And so she said, Roland, you coming to the show? I said, Queen, I, I said, I got a speech. I don't pass up checks. Mm-hmm. And I said, but my nieces would love to meet you. Mm-hmm. So she said, it's not a problem. So she said, I will leave. Because my wife is also a Delta. She was a Delta. Mm-hmm. So I'll leave three tickets. No mm-hmm. problem. So I get a speech. And so later that night, I hit my wife. I said, hey, how did it go? She said, well, they never got a chance to meet them. Mm-hmm. Like, what happened? She said, well, Michelle Obama, first lady, mm-hmm. came to the show. Mm-hmm. Attorney General Eric Holder came to the show. Mm-hmm. And then Secret Service cleared everybody out backstage. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, did you call a grandson? He's like, yeah, but we couldn't get him on the phone. I was like, oh, and they were disappointed. Saturday, phone rings. Mm-hmm. Roland, Aretha, mm-hmm. Queen, how are you doing? What happened to your nieces? Well, my wife told me, Secret Service, she says, What'd you say? <laughs> I said, Well, Secret Service cleared everybody out. Mm-hmm. Why should they try to reach the grandson? Mm-hmm. Couldn't reach him. She says, Let me call you right back. Mm-hmm. Somebody in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Ten minutes later, uh, she come back. Uh, I was finished cussing out my grandson. Mm-hmm. And she said, I want to apologize mm-hmm. to him for what mm-hmm. he did. Mm-hmm. And I made clear to him that I don't care if the first lady mm-hmm. or the attorney general or the president of the United States comes mm-hmm. to my show. Mm-hmm. If I tell you mm-hmm. to take care of guests and I want to see them, you are to take care of them. Mm-hmm. And she said he should not have, he should have answered his phone Mm -hmm. and he should have brought them back regardless Mm -hmm. of what the Secret Service had to say because it's my show. Mm -hmm. And that's that. That, that, that was the queen. That's that. I was like, bro, wow. We're in London. And she's going to sing for the Queen Mother of London. Lady Di, Princess Charles, and a jam-packed house. Sammy Davis is hosting mm-hmm. the show. Queen Mother is in the booth up there. Place is jam-packed. And Sammy comes on and he says, ladies and gentlemen, you know, You have your royalty here, (laughs) Queen Mother, (laughs) Prince Charles. But we have royalty in America as well. (laughs) We have the Duke of Ellington. (laughs) We have the Count of Basie. (laughs) And ladies and gentlemen, we have the Queen of Soul. So Rita <laughs> brought the house down. Wow. That's how he introduced them. Wow. Brought the house down. The queen mother and everybody had to stand up. The queen mother had to stand. See? 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 See, some folk on a whole different level. That's why when you were talking about um, Sidney Poitier, mm-hmm. um, Sort of like saying when I when you, you, that look that you had when he greeted mm-hmm. the dandies, mm-hmm. I all these years I never met Sydney, mm-hmm. and then when they announced that he and Harry Belafonte were going to present mm-hmm. at the Image Award, mm-hmm. I called Harry and I said, "I I I, I got to meet. I never met Sydney Porter, mm-hmm. um, and it bugged me that I never met Ossie Davis. Mm-hmm. I met Ruby D. Yeah, yeah. Got a chance to talk to her many times. Yeah." But not Ozzy. Ozzy's cool, yeah. So they come, they come out stage to present. Mm-hmm. Everybody, the show's going live. I get up. I said, I'm going back. I'm not going to miss him. Mm-hmm. So I didn't care about presenting. I, I get up. I go backstage. Mm-hmm. So I'm waiting for them to come off. Mm-hmm. And he comes off. And I just walk up. Mr. B sees me. Mm-hmm. Rolling. Uh, mm-hmm. He introduced me to Sydney. And I said, Mr. Portier. Finally glad to meet you. No, we have met before. <laughs> I'm like, no. Yeah. I would remember mm. meeting you. He said, no, 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 no. You and I have met before. And I go, how? I know you through television. 
<laughs> and I just crack up laughing. <laughs> and they uh walking him out mm-hmm. and he stumbles. Mm-hmm. And I catch him. Mm-hmm. And so I put my hand and so I walk him out to his car. Mm-hmm. So about a month later, mm-hmm. my phone's blowing up. TV one is emailing me, calling me. Bro, see the police trying to reach you. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, give my number. <laughs> Why the hell are y'all calling, calling me? me right. This ain't this right, 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 right. This ain't like this yeah, right, Sydney right. Jones. <laughs> what part of party? I was like, don't you understand? Give right, my right. number. Right. So I so they give me the number. So I call and I call. So I called, and it was his office. Mm-hmm. And he comes on. And he I, he said, I want to thank you. Mm-hmm. He said, I just had surgery. Mm-hmm. I was still unstable. Mm-hmm. And so I want to thank you for holding me up and walking me to the car. Mm-hmm. And he then begins, he then begins to say, I want you to know, he, so he, he says, wow, I should enjoy watching you. Mm-hmm. I'm sitting, and he, and he says, there's no backup in you. Mm-hmm. Glenn, I'm stopping my, this same thing. You talking about we talk about royalty. Mm-hmm. This is Sidney Portier mm-hmm. telling me mm-hmm. what he appreciates about me. Doc, I'm literally I'm, I'm about to start welling up. So I have to go like into my my reporter mode. So when you in your reporter mode, you 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 have no emotion. Mm-hmm. You, you, you don't you don't feel you mm-hmm. just you see your report. Mm-hmm. So I immediately just open my laptop up and I just start transcribing what he's saying. Mm. Otherwise, I'm about to just yeah, like, give it up. Huh? <laughs> this is Sidney Portier. Hi, I'm Dr. Jackie Hood Martin, and I have a question for you. Ever feel as if your life is teetering and the weight and pressure of the world is consistently on your shoulders? Well, let me tell you, living a balanced life isn't easy. Join me each Tuesday on Black Star Network for a balanced life with Dr. Jackie. We'll laugh together, cry together, pull ourselves together, and cheer each other on. So join me for new shows each Tuesday on Black Star Network, a balanced life with Dr. Jackie. When you described the, going down that hallway in Cooley High, when you talked about uh, people coming come to you uh, with college, mm-hmm. what talk about what black love feels like when what I just described with Sydney when mm-hmm. it's happened to you when people and you don't know and you've never met and yeah. and and they embrace you and hug you. I don't think folk who aren't in our position really. There is nothing like nothing that. Nothing like I it. Love. Nothing like it. Nothing like it. You know, I was just talking with my friend publicist over here, and she, Lillian was saying, "Boy, you know this Ivy Park uh, campaign that you're on now, you know, uh, has really blown up." You know. I said, yeah, I said, it has. I said, you know, and I'm not big on on Facebook or Instagram. I don't even have an Instagram, you know. I said, I do have Twitter. I said, God, all these followers and tweets and retweets coming. My God, you know, they just keep coming now. So she's, so she's saying, yeah, uh, a whole new generation is being introduced to you through this campaign, mm-hmm. you know. And it, it has been. And some of the things that are being said are so touching because they're saying, you know, we want to give you your flowers now. You know, you've been in this a long time, which I have, you know, and they're saying that I represented them well. Mm-hmm. And there's no amount of money that can buy that kind of 
gratitude, you know, that, and, and, and the feeling that I have as a result of hearing that. So that coming, and you know if it's coming from your people, that's, right. that's like, or, I, I feel like saying, Look, mom, on right. top of the world, right. you know. <laughs> you right. Know? It's, 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 it's special. For me, I've had, I, I, I've had the joy of having both of my parents here mm-hmm. and them getting to actually experience it. Yeah, you are lucky, see, you're a lucky man. And that's the thing. That, that is mm-hmm. probably uh, what... Uh, I really appreciate it. So mm-hmm. all of, look, I have parents who never went to college. Mm-hmm. Five kids, mm-hmm. never make collectively more than $50,000 in a year. Mm-hmm. Uh, and to be able to, to see, see, it, see it, yeah, experience it. See your son People do come his up thing. to them yeah. and, and mm-hmm. say stuff. Right, right. Uh, that, that a lot, for me, a lot of times is, is, is even more important than when. Absolutely. To me, that Absolutely. they get. Yeah, absolutely. Get to feel that and experience. It. Absolutely. Well, my mother put me on this track. I, was, I told you the story is how that happened, you know, and she didn't live to, to see the, the, the outcome, you know. Uh, but uh, I know she sees it from where she is, you know. And, uh, and I, I just can't. She's, of course, in my heart all, always, and, and I'm always mindful of, of that. You know, last question for you. As I as you were just talking about that, mm-hmm. Quentin Tarantino recently gave an interview where he said he will never do anything for his mother. Never because what? never do because anything for his father, for his mother, for his mother. Because when he was young. She said he would amount to nothing through his writing. And he said he yelled at her and he said it, it, it was painful to him that his mother would say that. And he said, I would never, I think he said he bought her a house, but I would never do anything more for her mm. with that. Mm. You talked about your mother and what sitting with her and, going over those lines for your audition and what she introduced you to. As a final point, talk, there's a parent who's watching and that parent has other intentions for their children, but they don't fully embrace what that child is passionate and wants to do. Mm-hmm. Talk about just the value of a parent not saying what Quentin's mother said, but a parent saying, baby, if that's what you want to do, I'm going to help you uh, get there. How important is that? Well, there's, there's, I, I've been on a couple of ends of this, being a parent myself, mm-hmm. grandparent. And having been a a, a, a a son, now like I said, I said to mom, uh, I got a baseball game on Saturdays. You know, if it gets in the way of the baseball game, I can't do it. Mm-hmm. She explained that it could interfere with the baseball game. And you loved baseball. And I loved baseball. Jackie Robinson. Don't forget, I'm from, I'm from the Jackie Robinson generation. Mm-hmm. Everybody wanted to be Jackie mm-hmm. Robinson. She said, you know, there's that actor that you like, too. There's Sidney, Sidney Poitier, fellow that you like in the movies. You know, he's going to be in it. You know, I said, well, you know, I don't know, Mom. I said, I, we got, you know, with the PAL. You remember the PAL? I don't know if you remember PAL. Mm-hmm. I'm familiar with it. Police Athletic League. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that was important to me. So she never said, you know, you got to go do this, blah, blah, blah. But she made it attractive. She said, well, if this happens, we might get to go on a train and travel some other places. Now, I also was very curious mm-hmm. kid and wanted to, to travel. You know, that was a passion of mine as well. So she found a way to influence or, or point out 
what could be the beneficiary. Expanded your horizon of the opportunity. Exactly. And I also knew that we were in dire straits in terms of financially, Mm -hmm. you know, that things were not as stable as hopefully they could have been. And that there was this element attached. So for a parent to know how to present a situation, an opportunity to your child, you know, is very important Mm -hmm. as to how you approach that, you know. And the one thing you can't do, and I learned this, is you can't want something for someone more than they want it for themselves. They've got to want it. They've got to want it. You know, that can be a dire mistake, Mm -hmm. you know. So in presenting the things that I, the opportunities that I liked, you know, oh, yeah, get to travel. And, and that was one of the high points of the whole thing for me was going on the train, got to go to Chicago, got to go to New Hampshire, got to go to uh, Pennsylvania, uh, 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 Philadelphia, you know, and that whole thing and looking out the window and seeing the country go by and the mm-hmm. whole thing. These are things that I still remember. You've certainly uh, have had your dreams come true and maybe a little bit more than that. So whether it's acting, whether it's uh, been a cowboy, whether it's been a big time golfer, uh, I've enjoyed it. Lynn Terman, I appreciate it. 